In 2019, the municipality of Toroella de Montgri de Estartit won the title of second most sustainable destination in the world, first in Europe. Praised for its wetland preservation, wildlife reserve, and aquatic policies, it is now a beacon of inspiration for nature-based tourism. However, it wasn't always this way, so what changed? The Toroella de Mongri Le Estartit municipality is located within the Costa Brava in the Baiximporada region of Catalonia, Spain. This 6,600 surface hectare district did not begin as a tourism destination, rather it grew into it organically. The town of Le Estartit was developed at the beginning of the 18th century, partially due to the good quality of nearby roads, but in large part due to the decline of piracy. Fishermen felt comfortable leaving their boats on the sandy shore and settled down, creating the port. For decades, you could find fishermen drinking and singing havaneras, accompanied by a guitar, in the tabernas, and women assisting their husbands on the beach, repairing the artisan fishing nets. Residents were also found farming and tending the fields. A salt industry developed from the sea, and along with it, food preservation. Indeed, until the 1960s, the area was primarily known for its fishing, and almost all residents caught anchovies and sardines in the summertime. In the year 1930, 130 fishermen could be found within the population. The upcoming decade would see the birth of tourism in Les Tartit, with the building of the first holiday homes. In the 1950s, the fishing industry began to lose its stronghold. A lack of port infrastructures combined with improper communication with associated markets led to the possibility of tourism to become of public interest. The first tour operators arrived and new hotels were built in the 1960s due to the increase in British tour operators. In 1967, there were an estimated 120,000 beds in Toroella de Mongrile Estartit, 10% of which were permanent residents. Throughout the 60s and 70s, the municipality developed with mass tourism in mind, building up on the hillsides for landscapes, creating hotels, campsites, apartments, bungalows, mobile homes, and the marina continued evolving. However, as of the mid-1980s, Toroella de Mongri Le Estartit's competitiveness in the mass tourism market began to dwindle. With a lack of more modern and large hotels and tour operators, consumers were moving on to other areas of the Costa Brava, the seeds for a new tourism model based around regeneration were planted and would be manifested over the 1990s, 2000s, and 2010s. In the beginning, the area of Toroella de Mongri Le Estartit was shaped by its landscape, the mountains, the sea, the river, and now the people have made a conscious effort to sustain these natural spaces that they hold dear. The governmental and private organizations of Toroella de Mongrile Estartit have worked diligently on policies, programs, and activities that encourage sustainability in every aspect of its tourism industry. These cover a wide range of topics, from the environmental to the social and economic. Thanks to the Covenant of Mayors for Sustainable Energy, a European cooperation movement held in 2012, and the approval of the Sustainable Energy Action Plan, the citizens of Les Tartit have been actively fighting against global warming and the impacts of climate change. The use of renewable energies was at 62% in 2016, still rising today, and a goal has been set to reduce CO2 emissions by 20% by the end of the year 2020. A good example of energy-saving implementations can be found at the Guillaume de Montgri Public School, which is working with a biomass boiler that feeds on wood fragments from the forest owned by the municipality. Additionally, areas of Toroella de Montgri Le Estartit have upgraded to environmentally friendly equipment, such as installing solar panels in the Hermitage of Santa Catarina or receiving energy certification A in the Le Estartit Kindergarten. Innovative models of land use have been implemented since 2003, thanks to the Local Sustainability Action Plan, including the improvement in accessibility in rural footpaths. And, when it comes to waste recycling, more than 47% of waste generated in the area has been recycled since 2016. Today, Toroella de Mongri Le Estartit is preparing a sustainable urban mobility plan that encourages limiting use of private vehicles and gives priority to traveling on foot or by bicycle. 
The goal is based around the collective use of public transport and other forms of mobility with little or no environmental impact. As the local people have been involved in the decision making process, a community bond has formed around sustainable urban development that is beneficial both for passengers and for the territory as a whole. All policies implemented in Les Startites aim to protect the landscape, the seascape, and the natural and cultural heritage. The area today is officially recognized as a quality destination, equipped with efficient infrastructures and services that support the local markets and attract several types of tourists with different needs. Now let's talk about three of the most acknowledged sustainable spaces in this beautiful municipality. The municipality of Toroea de Montgri de Estartit is very diverse geographically and includes a range of ecosystems and landscapes that go from mountainous peaks, characterized by the hills of the Matiso del Montgri, passing through the Baixter Plain and up to the maritime strip with the Medes Islands. There is a vast quantity and diversity of habitats, both marine and terrestrial, as well as the cultural landscapes of Montgri, the Medes Islands, and the wetlands of the Baix Imporada. These characteristics led to the area being declared a natural park in 2010, amassing a territory of 8,192 hectares where the three ecosystems converge. The park features 38 registered natural habitats, of which 17 are considered of European interest and four have priority conservation status, as well as 32 heritage sites, which have been declared cultural heritage of national interest, also known as B, T, I, N. Additionally, it contains 189 registered species of birds. Since the beginning of tourism-related activities in the 1950s and 1960s, the municipal planning policy of Toroea de Montgri de Estartit has evolved towards a reduction of land eligible for building and has increased in the number of conservation areas. The General Urban Development Plan for 1967 tolerated an excessive level of development with numerous buildings earmarked for tourist accommodation, but the scheme for 1983 halted these excesses by introducing much stricter controls. The areas subject to geological hazards have been declared unsuitable for building, restrictions on building heights and density have been reinforced, and the areas of natural beauty and the agricultural plain have both been protected. In 2014, the municipality initiated its participation in the European Tourism Indicator System ETIS, designed to increase the sustainability and competitiveness of touristic sites. Toroea de Montgri de Estartit was one of 60 European destinations that took part in the system. In late 2016, after two years of dedicated effort, the natural park of Montgri, the Medes Islands, and Baixter has obtained and implemented the European Charter for Sustainable Tourism, a prestigious distinction awarded by the Europark Federation that includes sustainable policies and practices for natural spaces. The municipality also forms part of the Network of European Regions for Competitive and Sustainable Tourism made up of 28 regional tourism authorities, as well as representatives of the academic world and industry. Not only has the natural park made environmental strides, but it has prioritized its cultural heritage with the conservation of the Montgri Castle and its encouragement of continuing musical and artistic traditions. However, Toroea de Montgri le Startit has made strides off of the land as well as on it. The archipelago of the Medes Islands is part of the Montgri Natural Park and the Baixter. It has a unique marine habitat made of many different types of corals and plenty of sponges, working both as an open-air laboratory for researchers and as a tourist attraction for visitors. Most of the establishments, diving centers, and infrastructures related to the islands have been awarded with high-level quality certifications because of their standards in providing excellent services and facilities. The Medes Center is comprised of the responsible authorities for the natural park of Les Artites and local private stakeholders to deal with the dissemination of conservation practices among the visitors. Inside are high-quality interactive programs focusing on the natural park's coastal area, highlighting how fishing activities in the marine environment positively affect the development of the city and improve the life and commercial activities of local citizens. 
As an example, the Guild of Fishermen of Les Tartites carries on the traditional fishing method and they sell products in the fish markets all along the Costa Brava. From the fishing boat to the table is not only a fact, but also the name of a festival held every May that attracts many visitors willing to eat local and also to learn more about the cultural heritage of the area. On the street Carrera de Ulla, inside the historical building called Can Quintana, the Museum of the Mediterranean offers a wide range of experiences that convey the sense of responsibility belonging to the people of Les Tartites, smelling the scent of the sea, listening to its sounds and reliving its history. All of these things are available within the museum. Leisure and conservation live side by side here in the Medes Islands. Water-based activities from scuba diving to marine life observation are constantly monitored so that their impact on the biodiversity of the marine environment is kept low and does not affect the local flora or fauna. The Chair of Mediterranean Coastal Ecosystem works in collaboration with the University of Girona and Toroea de Mongri as well as the City Council with the aim to manage this coastal natural space in a sustainable way. Studying the carrying capacity of the area, stating how many divers and snorkelers are allowed to be in a certain marine space, as well as doing training courses for those willing to do water sports. All of these are examples of successful policies committed to the protection of the marine coastal area. The Platera Sea area is located next to the mouth of the River Ter and contains a long stretch of sandy natural wetlands, dunes, marshes, and coastal lagoons that are of great natural value. In 2005, the Platera Zone was included in the Natura 2000 network and is protected as a partial natural reserve. However, during Les Tartites time of mass tourism, this land was threatened, beginning with the disappearance of the coastal lagoons due to construction in the sea line in 1986. The project Life Platera was born in 2014 with the goal of restoring the marshes. With a budget of 2,528,148 euros, 75% financed by the EU and the remaining by the Life program, it was supported by governmental, academic and additional public organizations. The objective was to de-urbanize and recover the functionality of the natural space affected by construction. This allowed the regeneration of the space, not only returning the coastal ecosystem to its original state, but also bringing back the fauna of the area, benefiting the environment as well as touristic offerings. But how did they do this? Well, they started by evacuating the urban area, a stage that took approximately nine months. Next, they demolished the infrastructure, recreated the lagoons, restored the salt marsh vegetation, created a walking trail, constructed viewpoints by utilizing empty houses, and reorganized public access to the area. The final stage consisted of updating the ecological monitoring habits. This included measuring the soil and vegetation growth in order to analyze the results of their implemented actions. The project was successful. The wetlands were recovered and the marshes were integrated into the natural park, not only helping the local environment, but the global as well, since carbon emissions and the area's CO2 capacity are continuing to be monitored, reducing Les Artites' effect on climate change. In only 53 months, from July 2014 to December of 2018, the Life Platera project proved that it is possible for natural areas to come back to life after urbanization and that they can thrive and sustain themselves without the need of human intervention. The efforts of Toroea de Mongri Les Tartites have had a successful outcome, making it the second most sustainable destination on Earth. This is thanks to a change in the mindset of the population and an awareness that the future of a nature-based location lies in the conservation of its resources, not only as an economical benefit, but as an improvement in the quality of life for everyone. This participatory movement that involved the majority of residents is an example to follow for communities all over the world. You too can take action to preserve and restore the ecosystems taken for granted by humanity and provide a beautiful planet for generations to come. Has started. A fishing village resort with one of the most extensive beaches on the Costa Brava has everything the holiday maker could wish for.